Now, Tando shares that it isn't solely his rugby journey that makes being a black springbok a remarkable sports biography. It's learning how he has negotiated life's perils and pitfalls, which threatened to derail both his sporting ambitions and the cause of his life as he had to deal with a sense of abandonment and a missing protective figure and find along the way people to lean on. Coming to the book, Being a Black Springbok, where did the decision come to write the book? You know, initially I, I wanted to write the book in 2011. Mm. Uh, but, you know, sometimes when you write something called, uh, whether it's a fiction or a non-fiction, uh, you've got to be in a matured state of mind. Uh, you don't write a book because uh, you're writing uh, in, in an emotional state of mind, because there you're going to lose the plot. So in 2011, when the idea came, I think I was not ready uh, at the time. But uh, through the death of the late Soli Kibilika, uh, it reignited the will and the want. Uh, where I was one of the speakers at his funeral, uh, where he was shot in Cape Town. And he laid there in front of me, and as I chat, and as I spoke to the, to the mourners at the funeral, you know, I just came up with a line that says, this is how it is to be a, a black, black springbok. Yeah. You know, it just came out of, the, out of the mind. I don't know where it came from, but it did come. And, um, you know, when we started writing the book, uh, we didn't have a title. Uh, I said to Sbu, we, we need to write. We don't have to worry about the title. The title will sort itself out. So at the conclusion of writing, when we were pressed for time to come up with, with a headliner for the book, uh, you know, I went back because, uh, you know, for me, it, it spoke a lot. It spoke a lot to the people, to the family, and we just changed it. And I, you know, as I said to Smoo, let's, let's call the book Being a Black Spring Book, coming from, uh, obviously, that, uh, that piece that I had, uh, you know, that peace-sharing moment, you know, a very sad one. It's all this uh, funeral. But if you also look at, uh, if one writes this, the book is, it had to be a life story. Mm. Uh, it is not about, I played this game, we won, we left, we got into a bus, no. Uh, I think what's important is we write the book, we write the book as a life story, but making sure that we don't leave anything. You know, uh, I'm quite open in the book uh, about a lot of things, which I think many people, uh, if one have read so many of their books, they are not, you know. Uh, they will s tend to, to hide a couple of things. No, they didn't, you know. It, it's, it's something that I just wanted to put out there uh, and share with the people. How people receive it, you know. Uh, for me, you, you'll always find those who, who, who receive it very well and those, but I'm hoping that both sides, you know, will look at my angle and understand where I come from. Now, you talk about, talking about Smoo, uh, he comes in and you, you guys come up with this piece together. Yeah. Um, I had a chance to, to speak to him as well just to find out um, about the book itself and what it took for you guys to put the, the, the book together. And he had words of thanks mm. to you, including Na Puma Gutando Kamani. Aswabon. Okay. Kajeni, thanks very much for giving me the opportunity of writing quite possibly one of the books that will make the biggest differences in terms of getting a united Springboks and a united rugby fraternity in this country. I know your contribution in the development and the progress of black people and rugby people in general has often gone unnoticed, but you've laid yourself bare and you've put out your mistakes, your lessons, your triumphs in this book, which is not an easy feat. I hope a lot of people appreciate it. Putando, I think uh, it's no secret that the conversations that we keep having are scary and they scare me and I hope when you sleep at night they also scare you because there's still a lot to achieve. Thank you for setting the benchmark. Thank you for going the extra mile. You are one and uh, we are there to follow behind you. And uh, I think uh, more than anything, it's a matter of uh, sponging off all that knowledge from you and, you know, for us youngsters learning after you guys to make sure that we look after the future. 
Now these are the people that appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> these Talking are the people of that scary. Exactly, like that appreciate you, yeah. and I mean, I mean, we appreciate you as well for what yeah. you're doing for for the fraternity, especially in development as well. And now celebrating you writing this autobiography is, um, what what do you want to finally achieve with this book? It's an interesting question. You know, I want so many things. You know, but one understands that you can only get so much. Mm. Uh, from from a people or a person, mine is just to to hope that it inspires whoever reads the book, in whatever in whatever form uh, it could be. If one is a singer, wants to become a successful singer, soccer player, a cricketer, or a drama, you know, being in acting like you want to be a John Carney of this world. If one looks at those great actors, uh, you know, that I looked upon in theatre at the time. Uh, but also what's important, I think, is if one reads the book, is to understand the fact that never give up, you know. Trials and tribulations are part of our life, you know, our life, uh, our life story in life. Uh, and I hope the book does that. I hope the book uh, unifies us in terms of listening to one another. We're not listening to one another as people. Uh, we're more on the negative side of blaming one another than listening, in fact, to one another and giving each other a chance uh, to really be become something because we all have different talents, you know, and different gifts from the Almighty uh, that has been given and have bestowed upon us. So uh, that's what the book for me, I would want it to be, you know. It is not about me wanting to be a guy that is known for writing the book or for celebrity status. I'm not a celebrity, you know. I'm a normal guy that I would walk and talk to anyone at any given time. Uh, and and I, have, I have no choices that I don't want to talk to certain media fraternities. I come to anyone because that's the type of person I am because the message is one. Let's unify, but most important, let's be inspired. And I hope the book does that. Tando, thank you so, so very much for the opportunity to have you. Uh, with us La Wizla Lamzansi and, and sharing your life story with us as well. Hopefully uh, young black kid like Lokshini uh, of Soweto will be motivated by this and hopefully the parents are gonna go out and buy these books for their for their kids. You know Soweto is the it produced the first African black springbok, Owen Goman. Mm. Comes from here. Uh, you know, uh, people say that the Eastern Cape is a cradle of black rugby. And, and, and I say, you know, Aban Balape Soweto are quite fortunate that they beat us uh, to, 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 to give in, you know, a, a black springbok to, to come from, you know, their, back, their own background. So for me, once again, as I said earlier on, honored and a privilege to come to your show. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we have come to the end of the show. Remember, you can get yourself a copy of the book at your local exclusive bookstores. We are also giving away a signed copy of the book to a lucky viewer who can tell us which year did Tando Manana make his Springbok debut? Which year did Tando Manana make his uh, Springbok debut? The question will be posted on our social media platforms and using the hashtag Lalamzansi Trivia, you can post your, all your, your answers. I'll also take the time to thank my guest, Otando Manana, for making the time to join us on the show today. From me now, Ufuyo Matoba, Ngitim Zansi, Ozani, Lizo Lalanati.